Today we're going to focus on this topic, the word made flesh. And there are a lot of uh, um, insights from the word of God. And we're going to turn to John chapter 1. And first of all, before we begin, we should understand why the apostle John wrote this particular book. And the easiest way to understand his purpose of writing the book of John, the gospel according to John, is really summarized in two verses. And that is written down in John chapter 20. John 20 verses 30 to 31. And uh, I thank the PA ministry, the crew, um, and uh, they are going to put in the word of God uh, on the fly. So uh, um, I think that it will work. So John 20, 30 to 31. And let us read this together. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. And that is the crux of the book of John. But these are written that he might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. And with that context, we are going to look into John chapter 1. And in John chapter 1, we read that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. And in Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And I jump to verse 14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So who is this Word? The Word of God. Who is this Word? Clearly, the Lord Jesus Christ. So that is the first thing that we need to know. The Word was made flesh. Our Lord Jesus Christ was born in this earth for you and me. And that is why we remember the Spirit Christmas. So let us see in John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning, it means in eternity, before time, before time, in eternity. You and I are all under this capsule of time. We only knew what it means of time in our life's journey. But eternity is before time. It is outside time. So in the beginning, in the eternity, was the word. Why did God choose to mention the Lord Jesus Christ as the Word? As all of you, as all of us know, we use words to explain our mind to others. And for example, just now, Deacon Aaron mentioned, next Lord's Day, we are going to meet at NUSS, right? So, our words explain our mind to others. Which NUSS? Kent Ridge? Bukit Timah? Or where? The moment we say NUSS at Suntech, straight away, you understood. That is the power of words. The Lord Jesus Christ is the word of God and Matthew Henry said it revealed God's mind to the world just as we use our words to explain our mind to others. 
the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the Word. And what does the word, word mean? In Greek, it is logos. It is the total message, the total message, the total message of God, God revealing Himself to us. It embodies God's revelation of Himself to humanity. And that is how we know who is God. And this word in the beginning was the word before time, in eternity. And the next we read, and the Word was with God. And when we see here this phrase, the Word was with God, the Lord Jesus Christ pre-existed with the Father, even before He came as a baby in a manger. So that we need to understand. And the Word was with God. It's distinct. He's distinct. And then it went on, and the Word was God. And that is unity. It's distinct and unity in God. And where shall we see this uh, phrase coming in so clearly to talk about the Trinity? And that is taken in 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. And it's the same Apostle John who wrote. And so we can see in verse 7, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. We thank God. We thank God for the doctrine of Trinity. We thank God for the, doc, for the triune God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So here we understand in the beginning was the Word, even before He came as a, babe in a baby in a manger, and the Word was with God, His distinct, and the Word was God, its unity. And God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, three in one. So we need to understand that in the context so that when we read that the Word made flesh, we would understand that Jesus, our Lord, is incarnate and He's the inspired Word. And He embodies God's revelation of Himself to humanity. And that's what we are going to focus on this morning. The Word was made flesh. And in verse 2, it's stated there that the same was in the beginning with God. He has always been with God, eternal. The Lord Jesus Christ did not just appear just as a baby in a manger, but He has always been with God in eternity. And verse 3, all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. And this is a further um, elaboration of the Word. And how did God make the world? How did God make the world? By the Word. And so here we can see in Colossians. And Colossians chapter 1. And verses 14 to 19. And I'd like to read this to you because this will help us to understand the preeminence of our Lord Jesus Christ. Colossians chapter 1, verses 14 to 19. And I read, In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the image of of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by Him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones 
or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things and by him all things consist. Even in the Lord Jesus Christ, all things consist. The whole world did not shatter into pieces. It is all in consist, brought together. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. So here we can see that the Lord Jesus Christ, in verse 3, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. That is the word. He is our creator. He is our God Almighty. And verse 4, in him was life. And the life was the light of men. So what does that mean? In him was life. And we like to see in John, the same book, John chapter 11, verse 25, whereby the Lord Jesus Christ proclaimed one of his great um, sayings of I am. Verse 25, Jesus said unto her, said unto Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. So we want to thank God that a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, though the earthly body may perish, absent from the body and present with the Lord. And that is most important because where does our soul go to? And in him was life, salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the word. And the life was the light of men. And we can also see that in John chapter 8. John chapter 8, verse 12. John 8, verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And what is this life and the light? It's basically salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we have salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ, our reasoning our understanding in accordance with God's perspectives of our lives. And we have that salvation, that eternal life, and Jesus' revelation of God, which calls men to accountability. So, in, and the life was the light of men. And what happened to this light? John continued on, and it said, And the light shineth, in darkness. And if this whole room were to be dark and we turn on the light, so straight away you would know that there is light because you're in darkness and when you turn on the light straight away, you should be able to see the light. But what happens in verse 5? And the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. It does not know that there is light. Even though they, saw, they, they could see that there's light, but they, they could not understand. Blinded, spiritual blindness. And the darkness comprehended it not. Then John went on to say in verse 6, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. John the Baptist was introduced at this juncture in the exposition of the Word of God. And who is John the Baptist? 
Let us look at Matthew and Matthew chapter 11, verse 11, right? Matthew 11, verse 11. That would give a summary of who is John the Baptist. Matthew 11, 11, Verily I say unto you, Among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Now, John the Baptist is not great because he has any superpowers. It's not because he is of more importance and in superpowers than Elijah and Moses and the rest. And what, what was the meaning of that introduction? That among them that are born of women, there has not reason a greater than John the Baptist. It may, merely means that John's unique position in introducing the Lord Jesus Christ to the world in history. So we can see that it's John's unique position in history as he introduced the Lord Jesus Christ to the world and calling the Lord Jesus Christ, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So we can see that John the Baptist was introduced at this juncture as a witness, as a forerunner, introducing the Lord Jesus Christ to the world. Because when the light shineth in darkness, the darkness comprehended it not. So, we see in John's exposition in verse 7, the same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light. The Lord Jesus Christ is the light, that all men through him might believe. And John the Baptist, verse 8, he was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. And verse 9, that was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. The Lord Jesus Christ, He is the light of the world. And what does it mean that which lighteth every man that cometh into the world? Is God's revelation is universal. God's re revelation is universally available. We have the Bible. We have nature. We have the preaching of God's word. God's revelation is universally available. But it is not about universal salvation. Salvation has to be embraced, accepted individually personally. So that was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world so that every man will have the understanding that there is a God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. And we know that the word was made flesh and came into the world, born in this world, and yet people of the world rejected. Because in verse 10, John continued with his exposition. He, the Lord Jesus Christ, was in the world. And he created the world. He was in the world. And the world was made by him. And we have just read just now in Colossians, in very detailed manner, that the Lord Jesus Christ created the whole world. And by him, all things consist. And it's by the grace of God that the world still consists. So he was in the world and the world was made by him. And what happened? The world knew him not. And they did not acknowledge him. And in that time in the history, in the first century, God sent this man, John, John the Baptist, to introduce the Lord Jesus Christ to the world. And verse 11, He came unto His own. Who is His own? The world, the people in the world. And His own received Him not. So generally, He was, re he was rejected by the world 
by people in the world generally, but the Lord Jesus Christ came specifically for his own people, the Jews, and he was rejected by the Jews in particular. So here he said, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. And John continued with his exposition in verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. What does that mean? But as many as received him and believed on his name, is taking Jesus as Savior embracing and believing the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. As many as received him, to them gave he power, gave him authority to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And who are the them that could believe in his name? You and I? If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we'll be the children of God. The Jews, if they were to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, they too will be the children of God. The Gentiles, if they were to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, they would also be the child of God. Because we can see that in the same book in John, and this is a very famous verse, which all of us should memorize, it's John 3, 16. It's the same book, it's the same author, the Apostle John. John 3, 16. And let us read this. Yeah, it came out. Huh? <laughs> and, and let us all read this together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen to that. That as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Because John was saying that the word of God is the Lord Jesus Christ. And in him was life, and he is the light of the world, but the world rejected him. But, as in verse 12, but there is hope, as many as received him. So it is important that we receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And John continued with his exposition in verse 13, which were born not of blood, to be a, a true child of God, believing in the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. What does that mean? Which were born not of blood. Now, sin, we inherit sin. Because we are born of Adam's race. After Adam and Eve, after Adam sinned against God, by taking off the, the forbidden fruit. And the whole world sinned against God. And whether we like it or we don't, we can scream for all we want and say that, I do not want to inherit that sin. I do not want to be born in sin. We are born in sin. Sin, we inherit it. But to be a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, to be a child of God, which were born not of blood. It is not by inheritance. It's by the grace. By the grace of God, we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and that is personal. We are not born as a Christian. So if your parents were to be Christian, and you would say that I am born as a Christian, no, there's no such thing as you're born as a Christian, because it is not of blood. It is not of the will of the flesh, it, nor of the will of man, but of God, by God's grace, God brought us to himself 
and we praise the Lord. And that is salvation is of the Lord and that is the great miracle. And we can see that John the Apostle continued on with this exposition and we can see in his other book, in 1 John, 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. Behold, what manner, what extent of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons, or literally children, of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. And that is a continuation of John's exposition. And John, and John the Apostle continued on in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. 1 John chapter 4. Okay, no. Okay, um, in, in 1 John itself, we can see that John gave the exposition that the Lord Jesus Christ, He is the Savior of the world. He is the Savior of the world and the Lord Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. So here in verse 13, we are child, children of God. We are born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So it is very, very clear. And then John the Apostle launched into verse 14. And by understanding the context, the Word, the Word of God, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word is the Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 14, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Let us dive deeper into this. Verse 14, we could see the love of God. The love of God. God loves us so much that the Word was made flesh, and that is incarnation of the Lord Jesus Christ. The message, the Word, the full message of God that existed even before time and that has all along even been shown in the Old Testament. And the Word of God was mentioned more than 1,200 times in the Old Testament. And that word, that message, the total message of God was made flesh, became flesh. And He is 100% God and is 100% human, it's man, yet without sin. So, how can we see the word made flesh and that miracle birth? You can see the season, the festivity around us. That you can, if you were to go to Orchard Road, a lot of lights were on. Even in Suntec area, the whole Suntec um, shopping mall, a lot of decorations. And people are already buying things and buying gifts, getting ready to celebrate Christmas. Tell our friends that the Word was made flesh. And we can read that miracle birth of the Word made flesh in this very familiar portion of Scripture that is taken from Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1 from verses 18 to 25. Matthew chapter 1 verses 18 to 25. And I give this reference because now we are at verse 14 and the juncture is that the Word was made flesh. So, I'll read this and you respond. I'll read 18 and then you respond 19 and we go on with that. Now, 
the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. We thank God, and the word was made flesh. And that reading usually is read during Christmas. And we should read it more often, actually. The word was made flesh flesh, the humble birth, and that manger. Sometimes people ask, away in a manger, what is that manger? Manger is basically a trough where you put straws and food and where the cattle and the animals feed. It's basic, basically the animal's bowl. That is the manger. He did not come as a pompous, multi-billionaire or an emperor, and he came with that humble birth and a carpenter lifestyle and connecting to his people. And the word was made flesh. So let's go back to verse 14 and let me explain. When the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, what is the meaning of dwelt among us? It has a sense of tabernacled among us, tabernacled among us. We know that in the Old Testament, God showed His Shekinah glory in the tabernacle when they were moving from place to place. And here the Lord Jesus Christ is the full manifestation and bodies God's revelation of Himself to humanity. And the word tabernacled among us, dwelt among us. And we could see that not only was he born in, as in a humble birth, in a humble place, in a manger, his lifestyle connecting to the people. And what happened? We beheld his glory, the visible manifestation of God himself. The glory as the only begotten of the Father. What is the meaning of the only begotten of the Father? And that is a unique relationship between God the Father and Jesus Christ the Son. Always was the Son of God. He was not created. He was always the Son of God. That is, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. The Lord Jesus Christ was not created. He has been there in eternity with the Father. And because He dwelt among us, He could empathize with us. Let us look at Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 to 16, Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 to 
16. The sympathetic Christ. How Christ could empathize with us. In verse 14, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Our Lord Jesus Christ is 100% God, is 100% man, yet he is without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And we thank God. We thank God for the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Not only could he empathize with us, he went through the challenges of life, yet without sin, that when he died in our stead, when he died on our behalf at the cross and took our sins upon him, he is that perfect lamb without blemish and accepted by God. And so by we believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are actually saying that, Lord, you have died in our stead. Because we couldn't, we couldn't live even, we couldn't live a perfect life. And certainly we could not die a perfect sacrifice. We can't. We just couldn't because we are sinners. But thank God that we can be saved by grace, full of grace and truth the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. We do not deserve this wonderful, miraculous blessings of salvation. So in verse 14, we could see the love of God. The Word was made flesh and tabernacled among us, dwelt among us, and He understood us. And He went through the life that we went through, yet without sin. And we beheld His glory, we beheld the visible manifestation of God, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And John continued on with his exposition in verse 14. John the Baptist, John the Apostle wrote about John the Baptist, bear witness of the Lord Jesus and Christ, saying, This was he of whom I speak. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. What does that mean? The Lord Jesus Christ came after John the Baptist was born. It's about six months after John the Baptist was born, and then the Lord Jesus Christ was born. So he that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me, because the Lord Jesus Christ was in eternity. It is not that, oh, then, six months later, then the Lord Jesus Christ was born and that was His beginning. No! His beginning was in the beginning, was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word, and the Word, the word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And that is why it is written down here that John said, He that cometh after me, is preferred before me, for he was before me. He was in eternity, the Lord Jesus Christ. And, uh, and verse 16, And of his fullness have all we received, grace for grace. Grace heaped on grace. What amazing grace. We sing the song, Amazing Grace. And indeed, we want to thank God that our salvation is totally by the grace of God. And verse 17, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ, the Word of God. Now, for the law was given by Moses. Can you and I observe and practice and pass all the law with 100% pass? No. The law convicts us of sin 
and we can't live a perfect, sinless life. We can't. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So how do we see that? Now we can turn to another portion of Scripture, and it is seen in the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. And this, we ought to memorize this verse. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Because here it's mentioned that the, by grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So Ephesians 2, 8. So let us read this together. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We thank God that our Lord Jesus Christ, in Him was grace, in Him was truth. So for by grace, we are not born a Christian, and it is by grace that you are saved through faith. And even that, even that is not of ourselves. Even that is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Therefore, if any person were to come to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, as personal Lord and Savior, we do not boast, not of works, lest any man should boast. We cannot say that. It is me. I'm so clever. I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't you think that I'm so clever? I'm so smart. No. Even that believing in the Lord Jesus Christ is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. And if you are here this morning, God, the Holy Spirit, has already worked in your heart to have that inclination to come to say that, God, I need you. God, I worship you. And I embrace you to be the Lord Jesus Christ, to be my Lord and Savior. And it is by that grace the Lord Jesus Christ brought us to himself. And the Lord Jesus Christ was born he lived, he was born sinless, he lived sinless, and he died as the perfect Lamb of God without blemish, and he rose again, victorious in death. Where is your sting? And that is why, as Christians, as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are not afraid of death. The even though as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, death is only like a shadow. It is like a bus. The shadow of the bus hit us. It is not the bus. It is only the shadow. So we thank God that in the Lord Jesus Christ, we have life. Because He has died in our stead, on our behalf. And He rose again victorious. Death where is your sting? And here John continued, John the Apostle continued to say, No man hath seen God at any time. Verse 18. Of course, why? Because God is spirit. No man hath seen God at any time. For the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. We can see God in Jesus Christ. And we can see that God loves us. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. What a beautiful assurance and declaration of God to us that no man hath seen God at any time, and God has created in us that vacuum that can only be filled with the Lord Jesus Christ. No other things, not money, not food, that's for sure, and not any idols. No. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, the Word of God, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. So this is the good news and the gospel of Christmas. So, 
Some people may argue and say that, oh, don't have any Christmas in the church. Christmas, they did mention 25th December. Well, I can't find in the Bible the date, 25th December. Oh, is it about going to the Catholic Mass? Christ Mass become Christmas. Is it that? No, it's not about that. But why do we still celebrate Christmas? Was the Lord Jesus Christ born? Yes. Therefore, we should remember Him. Is there Christmas season in Singapore? I am quite sure. You walk out of the door, you can see all the decorations. I mean, your friends ask you, what is this all about? Tell them that the Word was made flesh. Don't argue till the cows come home with regard to the date of the 25th December and with regard to the words of Christmas. But this is the message of the gospel. And can we tell the good news and the gospel to our friends and loved ones? Yes. And at the end of the year, we tell them. We tell them about and, and help them to understand what it is all about, the word of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, was made flesh. And He came to earth to were born for us, lived for us, died for us, rose again for us. So focus on the Word. Focus on the Lord Jesus Christ made flesh. And indeed, God is with us in Emmanuel, as we have read in Matthew just now. So, in Cornerstone Church, we do not want to argue about the dates. We want to use this period as to say that let us bring forth the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, you have your birthdays, right? You celebrate your birthdays, right? Our Lord Jesus Christ was definitely born on earth. The Word was made flesh. Let us remember that event. And let us tell our friends of the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, to wrap it up, the lessons that we can learn from this account of John chapter 1. First, thank the Lord Jesus Christ who was born and He lived, died and rose again for you and me and to reconcile us to God. That is important. We should thank the Lord Jesus Christ instead of arguing about dates and instead of shopping till you drop and become really insane of uh, obsession of material things. Let us thank the Lord Jesus Christ who was born, and He was born. The Word made flesh. He lived, He died in our stead, and He rose again for you and me to reconcile us to God. We thank Him for that. Second, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your God and your Lord and your Savior. And that is the best gift that you can have in this period. Share with your friends. And may our hearts be also strangely warmed and awakened that we know that we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and as our Savior. And I can say that the mere fact that you are here this morning, the Holy Spirit has already worked in your heart. The Holy Spirit has prompted in you and in your heart that you probably felt that uneasiness and you say that I need to go to church. I need to worship God. I need to embrace the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in Him as my Lord and Savior. The third, share the gospel of salvation with others. Be His faithful ambassadors this Christmas period. And in our church, we have several events. 
And today is the first Lord's Day that we're going to start on the Christmas message and the whole of December, and there are many other activities. So, join our hands together. Be His faithful ambassadors this Christmas period. Is it okay for us to have decorations at home in this festive, uh, festive period? Yes, if they are just decorations, it is fine. You have flowers, you have the trees, they are just decorations. But please do not worship them. Because that is not what Christmas is all about. That is not what the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ is all about. You can have all the uh, decorations. And please do not go and worship Santa. We worship the true and living God. The Word of God was made flesh and dwelt among us. And that is the story of Christmas. And we want to ask God to help us to be His good ambassadors. Let us pray. Almighty God, a gracious Father in heaven, thank and praise Thee that in Thy Word we have the assurance of salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus, He is the Word, made flesh, dwelt among us, save us to Thyself, reconciling us to Thyself, that all our sins, by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, cleanse us of all our sins, and that we put on the rope of righteousness, that when You see us, O God, You see the Lord Jesus Christ. For there is nothing good in us, but you see the Lord Jesus Christ. And we praise thy holy name. Lord, I pray that if there were to be anyone here this morning that have not believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, they too will come to believe in thee and to understand that they are sinners in need of a Savior. And Lord, we are going to pray this prayer. And if anyone here would like to believe and accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, Lord, help this person to pray in his or her heart to receive the Lord Jesus. And I pray this, and if you want to receive the Lord Jesus and you have not done so, you want to follow me. And even the others, if you want, you can also pray that your friends too will not feel awkward when they pray. Almighty God, my Father in heaven, I admit that I am a sinner. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Saviour. I believe His blood Cleanse me of all my sins. I confess the Lord Jesus as my Lord and Saviour. Receive me as your child. And I commit my life to Thee. And help me to walk aright with the Lord Jesus. In Jesus' precious and holy name, I pray. Amen.